Yo right guys, how's it going and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at FIFA 17 Custom Tactics. Now I'm not going to be saying that this will work for everybody, but it could well work for a small percentage or even a large percentage of you guys, depending on your playstyle. But what I want to do is explain how to use these Custom Tactics to the best of my knowledge, which is going to help you guys get better at FIFA. So if you enjoy this content, drop a like on the video. That's my alarm. That's not how you start a video. Anyway, drop a like guys if you enjoy my content. If you are needing Ultimate Team Coins, head over to FeverUltimateTeamCoins.com. Links below in the description. Use the code FUJI, get yourself a discount. Or if you are wishing to purchase games, head over to G2A. And also, use that code FUJI. Right, without further ado, let's get into the video. So a lot of you guys keep asking me, Fuji, what is your favorite formation so far on FIFA 17? And I'm tied between three. 4-2-3-1 wide, the one with the left mid, right mid. 4-3-3-4, I think it is, the one with the cam. And then we have this formation, as you're seeing right here, 4-3-2-1. And it's all dependent on what style I want to take up and what formation I'm going to be using. But this is the team. It is actually pretty cheap, and we've got some great players and also some really overpowered ones. I just want to show you this man right here. He's had a position change, and it's just made him into one of the best box-to-box centre mids that I've seen so far. Asamoah, 5,500 coins, which is slightly expensive, but look at those stats. In insane, really, really good. But anyway, without further ado, let's jump into the custom tactics, and I'll show you what's been working for me. So with the strategy that you're going to be taking up in-game, as its ultimate team, personally this would work for head-to-head, -head, but the speed, you want your players not to be too quick where they're running out of uh, stamina and you don't want it to be too slow, otherwise you're not really going to be building up efficiently. I think 66 is it's just the right balance between not too slow, not too fast. It's nice. Your players will continue to move, create space, and it works really well. Then we have passing. Now, if you put this down to below 40, you're wanting to do short passes. If you put it above 50, then you're wanting to do a long passes. Now, personally for me, I would just leave that as a 50-50 because you don't really want to restrict yourself into doing too many short passes where you're going to be uh, easily read, and then you don't want to be like forcing yourself into long passes because people are just going to cut it out. So I think that's perfect. And you want your build-up play to be organized. You don't want everyone just free roaming. It just doesn't work that well. So with chance creation, uh, this is important. Passing 68. This is the movement of the ball to the best of my knowledge. So players, what they will do is if you have this really high, they will always make moves to create space for you. And it's just so much better going forward and also shooting. That is the positions that your strikers or attackers are going to get themselves in. So I think 68. 68, 68 is very good but the only problem with this is if you do in fact select free form with the actual passing and shooting creation that means you have a free form structure where everyone is all over the place and then with the passing to 68 you're asking your players to make a little bit more of an effort to create space then that's hectic you don't want that so we drop that down to organize and the crossing I never cross on the game anyway, so you can leave that 50-50. But then defending, you do not want your defense to be pushing up. So for me anyway, I usually defend from the midfield. So I'll have my two CDMs there or a formation with three centimeters, as you're seeing. And I want my defensive line anyway to be further back. So you can go from, you can play about with it yourself. I would go under 50. Well, it actually st uh, starts at 50. Just under 50 will be perfectly fine. Aggression. If you've got players with good stamina in your centre-back positions and you want them to be closing that ball down, you want them to get there with good solid tackles, then your aggression should be at least over 60 because then that will really help you out. Team with 55 is a good balance between not too narrow, not too wide. It's just nice to be able to defend the wings and also defend any like tiki taka style of play coming towards you. And this, EA are so cheeky, man. So what they do is... As default, that is set as offside trap. So if you're wondering why players are getting in behind of you or your uh, centre backs are starting to step up, there is a good reason because they have that set as offside trap. I think it's just to add a little bit of the arcadey feel. So uh, games are slightly more open, but you want that as cover. So these are the tactics that have been working for me. I'm still playing about with it. But it, anyway, let's go through the team. We've got Leno in goal. We've got Preya, top rack. Zragovic, Austrian beast. Uh, Alexandro that is so quick and he reads the game very, very well. Really do like the way he's feeling. Asamoa in that centre mid position because he's that box-to-box -box beast. Hernanez, now I was wanting to use 
I'll be honest, I was wanting to use Allen because he has high defensive work rates. And if you've been watching me for a, a couple of years or from FIFA 15, you would know in this formation, I do like my middle center mid to be dropping back as a CDM. But it was working with Hernandez. He didn't really feel too slow on the ball and he was just there to dictate the play. He's got good passing. Then we have Herrera with the high tie work rates. He's actually pretty decent. Six assists as well in 10 games. So you can see how well balanced it is really. We've got Herrera on the right. We've got Asamoah on the left with uh, four assists and then in the right forward position Corona he was really good although he's only scored three goals his dribbling is insane 88 dribbling he does like to keep it very close to his body and my advice is when you're attacking get the ball from one side of the pitch to the other do not rush your play I've really started to realize that if you come into it with a mindset of FIFA 15 where you're trying to do too many ping pong passes it is just not going to work you need to find the right balance between doing that and also just holding on to the ball abusing the shielding because that is what the game is built up on and then obviously we have Jonas with 10 games five goals four assists like everyone is getting loads of assists so who's scoring the majority of the goals Felipe Anderson 10 games 10 goals and he just feels great on this game but guys that is the team that I was using those are my tactics I want to jump into some clips to uh, show you the actual squad in action but if there are any questions please feel free to drop it in the comments and like I said the tactics that I've shown you today might not work for you they could in fact work for you have a play about with it and see if um, if it improves your game but yeah let's get into the clips hope you enjoy so while the clips play out for you guys I want to give you a bit of advice as to what's been helping for me and maybe it will improve your game as well because on Fever 17, I admit, I came into this game using fast build-up play, sort of just pressurizing my opponents and at times depending on who you come up up against yes it can work but usually you will fail against the better opponents now I'm finding myself in division 5 right now and all the people that are in division 5 or higher are the elite of the elite because they've been playing early access they've been grinding out divisions now one or two might just be rogue and they may have got lucky wins but I very much doubt that so the quality that I'm coming up against I'm finding really really good players and I'm starting to learn from them and it's helping to improve my game so I will take the loss to see what's broken open my defense now I will in fact improve that and I'll also use that to my advantage of improving my attacking play so what I've actually tend to notice that has been really effective is to shield the ball and use L2 R2 to get a burst of acceleration and then pull it back that really does throw your opponents off. And if you can keep doing that and be unpredictable, it's the best way to attack. Otherwise, if you're just someone that relies on passing, it is very, very easy to read. Unless unless you put killer through balls in. And I'm not saying you can't do that, but it's best to add a little bit more variety to your attacks. Otherwise, you are going to struggle. And like I was saying about shifting from one side of the pitch to the other, that works really, really well. Add a few crosses in there. Add a few fake shots. Like, fake shots are actually really effective this year still. I thought maybe they would have got rid of that. Even drag backs, they're still pretty decent just to open up the play and buy you some time. But it's all about waiting for the right time to release that ball. And usually, more often than not, with the tactics that I've shown you today, your actual CPU players, when you're not controlling the, the guy, they will make runs for you and make really good runs. So what to do is my style is a little bit faster than maybe the average. So in the tactics, maybe play about with it, see what works for you, but you can find the right balance. And if you don't use tactics on Fever 17, I feel this year, you're going to get absolutely abused, especially how EA have basically put it in the menu screen for you to play about with it. So if you don't use that, then you're already at an automatic disadvantage but guys hopefully the video you've enjoyed and uh, it gets you thinking maybe to improve your game but if you want to see more of this type of stuff please do drop a like and i'll see you on my next video thanks for watching team out peace